Welcome to State of Tech. We're going to take a look at TweetBot 3 for Twitter, which is a Twitter client for the iPhone and iPod Touch. Currently, it is $4.99 in the App Store, and I feel it's one of the better Twitter clients you can get for your iPhone, and you're going to see why in this demo. Now, tap on TweetBot, and it's going to load us in, and it's logged me in with my Twitter account. Now, you can choose to either log in with your Twitter account directly inside of TweetBot, or it's going to log you in using your iOS settings, the Twitter accounts you have in there. So right here from the main screen, you can see this is a very simplified and elegant solution to Twitter. Down below at the bottom of the screen, I have my different tabs. I have my timeline that I'm currently in. Tap on the app button, here's my mentions. Tap on the little mail icon, these are my direct messages. And the last two tabs are customizable. Right now I have it set to search and my profile. But if I tap and hold on any one of these last two tabs, notice it brings up some options where I can go ahead and view retweets. I can view my favorites. I can view anything that I've muted. And I can also come back into my lists and then even put it back to my search field if I would like to. So those last two taps, keep in mind, are customizable. Just tap and hold and you can change them to whatever you would like to with inside these menu options. So let's go ahead and come back into our timeline. And now what I can do is swipe down and it's refreshing. Now I don't have any new tweets, but if I did, there would be a button right below the compose, the top right hand corner, letting me know how many new tweets there were. Now, if any tweet inside my timeline catches my eye, all I have to do is tap on it. It's going to highlight it. See, this has been now highlighted in gray. And what I can do now is I have some options. I can reply, retweet, favorite, share, and even view some settings. So if I tap the reply button, it's going to compose a new tweet and automatically fill in any usernames that are mentioned in the tweet. Notice Google Play is the first one, being that that's the person I'm replying to, and then Fear the Walking Dead is highlighted in blue because that Twitter account was mentioned in the tweet that I'm replying to. If I didn't want to reply to both people, just hit the back button and it clears out that other username. Now down below, above the keyboard, we have a camera icon, an at symbol, and even a hashtag symbol. So I tap the camera, it's going to allow me to use either my last photo taken, I can take a photo or video, or choose from my library. I can even do the at symbol and begin typing in someone's name and notice it's begin filling in usernames right above the keyboard and I can tap on one and quickly fill someone in. Same thing with hashtags. If I tap a hashtag, we'll go ahead and ty start typing. Now I can type in and fill in the hashtag. So those are really cool options to quickly compose some tweets. So we'll go ahead and close that. We'll go ahead and delete this. We notice we can save it as a draft as well. If I tap on the retweet button, I can either choose to retweet to my followers or quote the tweet. Quoting the tweet will allow me to go ahead and fill in some of my own thoughts about this tweet and then send it out to my followers. Tapping the favorite button will go and allow this and send this tweet to my favorites list. Tap the share button. We can share this with all of our favorite iOS apps and settings from the iOS share sheet. And then if I tap on the settings on this tweet, it's going to allow me to view details, view the retweets, view in the fave star, or translate. Viewing details is really nice because I can come in here, see how many favorites it has, how many retweets, what client it was sent from, and actually the date and time that this tweet was sent. And I have the same options I had earlier down below, such as the retweet, um, favorite, reply, and share in the settings again. And up at the top right hand corner of the detail page, I can tap that share button and I can tweet this conversation or email this conversation. If I were to pull down to refresh, if anyone had replied to this tweet, I would see all of the conversation list right above this. So that's the reason for the share button up here where I can email and tweet the conversation. Come back out to the timeline and if I come up all the way to the top, and instead of pulling down to refresh, if we leave it right up here, notice I can search my timeline. Or what's also really neat is I can switch it over to a media view timeline. So tap on this square in the top right hand corner, and it's going to filter out all the tweets and show me only the ones that have any media attached to it, so such as images or videos. And I can swipe through, tap on the image, and bring it full screen. Now whenever you view an image, if you want to get out of it, just swipe up anywhere and it lets you out of the image. You can also go ahead and swipe down as well. It has a nice little animation letting you know you're coming out. Top on the mentions, and here again are our mentions. We have our messages. We have all of our tabs down at the bottom. Now to compose a tweet fresh without having to reply to anybody or anything, just tap on the compose button in the top right hand corner. This compose button will be in the timeline, the mentions, and also the messages. Now when you're in the messages though, it's going to compose either a new tweet or a direct message. This will give you those options. But if you're in the timeline, it's just going to be a new tweet. 
So here again, you can fill in your tweet, fill in the usernames, the hashtags, and the photos that you like to send, and then go ahead and tweet it. Earlier, we talked about mute filters. We have the mute filters down here in the bottom right hand corner. So I've muted people, I can mute keywords, and I can also mute hashtags. What this is going to do is allow me to actually keep these people, keywords, hashtags, or clients from showing up in my timeline. Even if someone I follow mentions them, or retweets them, or even uses hashtags or keywords. Now I can tap edit in the top right hand corner and actually unmute these specific people or keywords or hashtags just by tapping on the minus button here and the tapping delete. That will allow those muted items to actually be shown back into my timeline. Now the way that you mute something is you come into your timeline and say I wanted to mute a specific uh, user or hashtag. I can tap on a user's icon or tap on a at mention inside of a tweet, tap and hold, and it's going to give me some options where I can publicly reply, manage my lists, disable retweets, or mute. Tapping on mute will give me a few different options. I have one day, one week, one month, or forever. So one day, mainly, I use for TV shows that I like to follow so that way I don't get any spoilers. So that way I can watch it the same day and not see anyone ruin it for me. Or you can use one week, one month, or forever. Now that was actually a user that I tried to mute. But if I come down and swipe down and see if we can find one with a hashtag, that will allow me to go ahead and mute that hashtag. So here, see the hashtag Travel Tuesday. If I tap and hold on that, I can tweet the hashtag, copy it, or mute it. And if I mute it, it'll give me the same options earlier, such as one day, one week, one month, or forever. So that's a few simple ways to actually how to mute and use the mute option here in Tweetbot. Now up in the top left-hand corner, if I tap on my profile image, what this allow me to do is select my account. So if I've signed in with more than one account, I can go ahead and switch accounts here. I can add accounts down in the bottom left hand corner by tapping on the plus button and here I'm going to be able to sign in with my Twitter account. Notice in the top right hand corner if you're using 1Password on your device you can quickly fill in your username and passwords using the 1Password extension. I thought that was a really neat feature. Go ahead and tap close and we'll come back in here. Now we're going to view the settings. This is where I can set up some general settings for sounds, displays, streaming, quote formats, my browser preferences and even my right swipes and then my account settings. So sounds, you can choose to play all, notifications only, or none. So these will play sounds if you have the sounds enabled on your device. Display will allow me to change the tweet views here. So I can change my font from my system default to another Avenir font that's come built in with Tweetbot. I can use my system font size, or I can go ahead and swipe that off and adjust the font size in Tweetbot to my likings. I can choose to display name with full name, username, or both. I can change my image thumbnail size and even change the avatar to be a round or square and even show the badges for verified accounts. I have my date format and then my theme. I have a night theme or a default theme. So if I go into night theme, if I come back out to my timeline, it's going to be dark. And if I tap on highlight a tweet, notice instead of it being the dark area, it's kind of highlighting it in a lighter gray. As a more advanced feature, if you take two fingers and swipe up, it'll go into the light theme. Take two fingers and swipe down, and it goes into the dark theme. So if you want to switch those very quickly, all you have to do is take two fingers and swipe either up or down to switch your themes. We'll come back into our settings, and if we come into our streaming, this will allow me to go ahead and stream if I'm connected to a Wi-Fi network, so it'll pin all of the newest tweets to the top, and as new ones come in, it'll keep bringing them in without the need for me to refresh if I'm on a Wi-Fi network. My quote format, I can choose to do a standard quote, copy tweet, retweet with a comment, or via an at username. The standard quote works really well. I would recommend leaving it there, but you can either copy or do these other options if you would like to. We have a short right swipe. I can favorite or retweet. So come back out to your timeline. And if we come onto a tweet and do a short swipe, it's going to quickly do the option that we selected in our settings. So come back into the settings and we have a couple more options. We have our browser options. So when I open up a link in a tweet, I can either choose to use Safari, 1Password, or Chrome, or I can even choose to open links in Tweetbot itself. But if I wanted to use an external browser, leave that open in Tweetbot unchecked and choose the browser of your selecting. And then in our account settings, this is where we can choose to set up our push notifications. We have URL shortenings, image uploads, video uploads, read later, sync, and immobilizer.
Now, notifications, you have all your standard options, such as mentions, direct messages, retweets, quotes, and favorites. You can even test the notification system down at the bottom. URL shortening, you can choose from any one of these services or use a custom one if you have that set up. Image upload, you have all these other options in here as well. Same thing with video upload. And then read later, you can choose from all the read later services. Most of these come default the way that they are. I've, I've left them for default for the most option. There is one really cool option with the sync option here. If you're using TweetBot on your iPhone, iPod, and you have the Mac client and also the iPad one, you can actually sync your position across all your devices using iCloud or TweetMarker. And you can have a visual marker display across the top. So when I'm using iCloud, you can use TweetMarker as well. Whenever I come into TweetBot on my iPhone and start browsing my timeline, wherever I left off on my timeline will also be where I left off on the timeline on the Mac. So that's really nice to be able to sync my timeline viewing across multiple devices. And then Mobilizer, you can choose to either use Google or Readability. And it's going to strip away all of the actual styling and just load in web pages faster and giving you a more streamlined view. So that was an overview of TweetBot 3 for the iPhone. Like I said, if you like it, go ahead and pick it up in the App Store. The current price is $4.99, and I think it's going to be well worth your money and investment to use this as your Twitter client on your iPhone.